if you're the Leafs, do you react at all to that? Because while it's a team in your division, the hell are you going to do? Well, but but the thing is, you got to get through Tampa first. Like Boston is a is almost like a big prize waiting for you if you can finally get through that first first round series. Oh yeah, we're gonna we're gonna have a first round parade in Toronto, let alone a championship yeah. parade, right? Let's be honest here. If they can finally get over that hump, there'll be a lot of people parading around up and down Young Street honking horns. But you know, to me, this is not about reacting. Like it's this is just about acting, and they've got to act as though right now they do not have a shutdown pair on D, and they need to find a player to complement that because. They still haven't replaced Jake Muzzin. And until they do, I don't know how they can go into the playoffs believing that they have a playoff-worthy defense core. And as far as matching up, Mark, the Toronto Maple Leafs, like, they should be looking at this, and it hasn't really happened yet. Tampa Bay's runs, Kucherov, Stamkos, Point, they were better than every other team they played against. Mm -hmm. So if John Tavares and Nylander and Marner and Austin Matthews if those guys are dialed in every single night, kind of like a little bit what we saw in Buffalo the other night, where it's like, man, that's tough to, like, that's tough to deal with. Right. So that's their thing. Well, They're playing the Boston Bruins. You can say, oh, they got another defenseman, but you know what they don't have? They don't have an Austin Matthews. I don't care how good Patrice Bergeron is, or Krejci, or Pasternak, or all those guys. Austin Matthews against any team, including Edmonton, if he goes out there and dominates, he could be the best player on the ice. And the Boston Bruins would have to say, oh my God, we don't have anything to deal with Austin Matthews. Yeah. So that that is their trade-off. When you look at some of these transactions that teams are making, they have one where if all those guys, and we haven't seen it yet, no. Will we see it this year where it's just like they're too much to handle and nobody could nobody could handle it? That's a great point, Odog. I mean, that to me has been the crux of the whole six year in a row, one and out, is yeah. that they've never had their top guys. Like they've, they've put up numbers at times and you know, you you could look here and there and say, Yeah, they've done their jobs. Yeah. But they've never like grabbed a series. They've never absolutely annihilated an opponent. They've never dominated an opponent in the way you kind of hope you might get, you know? So they've never had a goalie steal a game from, but they've also never had their best players say, I'm taking this game over. That's, and and there's nothing you can home. say about it. Yeah, exactly. But as good as Tampa and Boston, Boston are, as you point out, not, not just Austin Matthews, Mitch Marner could be the best player in the entire series. All too, day long. Right? Like it's, so could John it's, Tavares. So it, could William Nylander. Yeah. Right? Like it's, hey, the door is open. They're, they're welcome to it. And all you're looking for is to kind of, you play every other night. So if you get two of four or three of four going, like doing that, that's all you're kind of wow. looking for. It's almost impossible. But like I mentioned, the Tampa, when they went on those two runs, every night it seemed like Braden Point and Kucherov were yeah. scoring. Stamkos and Kalorn and those other guys, Palat, it was like they were the secondary guys. But those other two guys, every night, you need a goal, you got a power play, they were scoring. Mm -hmm. You're right. It's a lot to ask, but other guys do it, so why shouldn't they?